Now what I'm going to do is, I've actually worked this piece. It's a different one than the one I was working on. This is something I prepared earlier on. Um, it's at a point now where I'm going to switch techniques and I'm going to use um, pressure flaking to um, create a much more clean um, bifacial tool. Uh, a bifacial tool um, is one where flakes have been removed, not from just one surface, but two, so that's where the bi, bi comes from. Um, a lot of the tools are, are unifacial, and that means flakes have just been removed off, off one surface, but this is a biface. Um, from this, I can create a number of different tools. Um, the most obvious one is a, is a spear point. Um, but that might just take a little too long. What I'll basically end up doing is I'll just show what pressure flaking is all about and I'll take probably this edge here and uh, I'll actually sharpen it and clean it up and get it ready to be used as a, as probably as, it could be used as a knife type tool. Um, what you always wanna do is, is keep uh, a, a, an abrader um, handy when you're doing this um, and it's always a good idea to dull any of the sharp parts that are on this. Um, that way you don't actually cut yourself while you're doing it. And then you also use the abrader to set up your platforms um, to remove flakes. And so the technique I'm going to use is pressure flaking. And it's, again, I'm using a lot of the same principles as I was for soft hammer percussion and um, hard hammer percussion. The biggest difference is um, instead of taking uh, an object and striking the edge, I'm going to take, this is a deer tine, this is a white-tailed deer tine, is I'm going to take that tool, I'm going to place it along the edge where I want to remove the flake, and I'm going to push, push the flakes off. And with the same thing um, with soft hammer and hard hammer percussion, a lot of times you end up spending a fair amount of time just sort of getting things prepared um, to, to remove some flakes. So that's what I'm going to do first. And once I get it prepared, I'll actually show you what I'm doing a bit better. So basically what I've done is I've created a series of little ridges along the edge here. Um, it still, this edge here is still quite sinewy. Um, it requires to be a, a bit of work to sort of straighten it out and, and get it all nice and sharp. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tool, I'm going to place it along the edge, and I'm actually going to push in the same direction as this face. So in this case, I'm going to push in pretty much like that, it's kind of like peeling a banana. Um, you would push in the same way, in the same direction as, as the surface itself. If I come straight down, I'm not going to get a very big flake. It's just going to come straight down. If I push up, it's not going to actually work. Um, so really, I'm, I'm following this surface, and I'm going to push in that direction. And basically what I want to do is, is place the, the piece in my hand like this, use my hand as a, as a vise and so that I can keep it nice and secure and place the tool right along the edge there and then I'm just going to push in and produce some flakes. And again, I could do this in a number of ways. I can do this freehand where I keep it up up here like this, but uh, again, I have to rely on, on my strength and I'm, I don't like doing that, so what I'll do is I'll actually place the thing right on my leg so that when I push, my hand isn't going anywhere. So I don't actually have to use any of the muscles in my arms, just the one in my fingers to keep it secure. And one of the other things is when you're pressure flaking, the, the, the debitage that you're producing is considerably smaller than any of the stuff that we've produced um, previously. Um, but it has all of the same characteristics of the hard hammer percussion and the soft hammer percussion. You won't be able to see this, but this is actually the strike. This is the platform right here. 
um, and it has all of the same, a lot of the same characteristics, it has all the same characteristics of those previous flakes. Um, here, I'll make some more, see if I can actually get one intact. It's really hard to do with obsidian because now I'm really dealing with thin, thin pieces that I'm not um, chipping off here. So the, the chances of actually getting an intact flake is, is pretty, pretty slim. But there, there's where the, the platform is there, and obviously it's, it's shattered up quite a bit. But if you, it was intact, it would actually look quite similar. It would have all the same features as those other flakes. And I was able to produce a flake that went initiated here and terminated here. And I'm also, I can actually use this to sort of clean up this edge, but I can also use it to clean up this face here as well so that um, it's nice and clean. And all I'm doing is I'm placing the, the tip of the tool right on the, the platform that I'm gonna use the, to push the flake off of. Yeah, again, they're, they're there, but they're just really thin and shattered. And again, a flake from there all the way to there. Oh, I think that one kept, there we go, that one's intact. Um, it has the, there's the platform there. It actually has a bunch of the little ridges there. And obviously when it came off, it created a ridge here and a ridge here. This is actually an intact pressure flake. Hold on to that. And again, I was able to push it from here all the way to the, to the center. And it's actually cleaning up this, this, ed this, this edge, this surface here and this edge quite a bit. And what you can do, what I can do is I can just keep doing this all the way along this edge on one edge or one face as well as the opposite face. And what it does is it sort of, every time I produce, uh, take off a flake, it's straightening this edge so that when I'm done, it'll be nice, nice and straight. And obviously I'm, I'm grinding the edge as I go along, but it's because I don't necessarily want a sharp edge just yet. I actually want to keep the edge fairly dull and sturdy so that I can keep knocking off, knocking off the flakes or pushing off the flakes. It's probably the most controlled technique for producing, um, flakes and so if you're trying trying to generate or create something that's a bit more delicate then this is the technique you most likely would want to use right uh, is, is you have the most the most control over the type of flake that you're going to produce right um, and it's it's fairly simple to do um, it doesn't require as much skill as say soft hammer percussion because um, it doesn't require that same hand-eye coordination. You're actually placing your tool right on the edge and then pushing in. And so it's, that simplifies things considerably, right? Um, and it also allows you to be far more accurate, right? I have a, a thick spot here and by using pressure flaking, I'll be able to thin that out quite easily um, because I can control the, the, how big the flake is, the flake is gonna be that I'm gonna remove and the type of place and where I'm gonna remove it from, right? So it just allows you that much more, much more control. And it allows, pressure flaking also allows you to work with more delicate edges, right? Whereas with soft hammer, if I were to strike this edge with a billet, I'm, there's a better chance that I'm actually just gonna crush the edge. Whereas with this, I can actually control and not necessarily lose so much material. There we go. 
go. And just by taking off those three or four flakes, I actually thinned out that whole section right there and I barely lost any of that edge at all, right? Um, and what I, would, what I would do is just keep doing that until I, to finish the tool, if I wanted to put like a tip for a spear point on there, I would just keep working in that one particular area, flipping it back and forth to uh, work it down and shape it, thin it, get rid of the material that I don't want on there. In just that short period of time, I was able to sort of modify that entire edge to here is where I would want the tip to be. And of course, I would work this edge down. And at the same time, what I've done is I've created a very thin, straight, sharp edge. Obviously, I would clean that up a lot more um, to, to finish off the tool. But I'd basically pressure flake that off there, create the tip there. Um, I would want to modify this edge here. Um, as you can see that it's still quite, it's got a bunch of edges to it. It's quite sinewy and there's actually a stretch in here where there's an edge here and an edge here. But using pressure flaking, <clears throat> I can sort of work that down quite quickly. If I wanted to make thicker flakes, I would use a, uh, Obviously, I wouldn't use such a sharp or fine point like this. Um, when I get into the finish, really the finishing stages of a spear point, where I want to say put some notches or something in here, um, what I'll do is I'll actually use this is just a piece of, of moose antler that I've ground down, and I've created a, an edge here that's really narrow, but it's quite thick, so that when I apply pressure, I have all of that material behind me to to uh, make a flake, but it's still going to be quite narrow, so that when I go to put a notch in, I can apply a fair amount of pressure to it and still keep it quite narrow, right? And so, um, obviously, if I were to put a, a notch I can actually keep notching this. Obviously, the more, the further into the tool I go, the, the thicker it, it might end up being, but most notches are never gonna be much deeper than that anyways, right? So, um, and all I did was, to produce that notch was I, I chipped it in, in the spot. I flipped it over in the same spot. I just chipped it again, um, and I keep working that back and forth. And the interesting thing is, and we won't be actually be able to see it, is that the, the flakes that I'm producing are actually fairly unique. They, they look like little, look like they have little wings on them. And so when you see those, you can say, oh, that's probably a, a notching flake versus your run-of-the-mill partial flake.